On the third night of hunger, Noni thought of the dog. Nothing lived upon that floating island of ice except himself and the dog. When the ice broke up, Noni had lost his sled, his food, his furs, even his knife. He had saved only Namuk, his great devoted husky. And now the two, completely alone, marooned on the ice, eyed each other warily. Noni's love for Namuk was real, very real. It was as real as hunger and cold nights and the gnawing pain of his injured leg. But the men of his village killed their dogs when food was scarce, didn't they? And they killed them without thinking about it twice. He told himself that Namuk, when hungry enough, would begin to seek food. One of us will soon be devouring the other, Noni thought. So he could not kill the dog with his bare hands. Namuk was powerful and much less tired than he. A weapon, then, was needed. Noni took off his mittens and unstrapped the brace from his injured leg. When he had hurt his leg a few weeks before, he had made the brace from bits of harness and two thin strips of iron. He kneeled and wedged one of the iron strips into a crack of eye of the, in the ice. Then he began to rub the other iron strip against it with firm, slow strokes. Namuk watched him, and it seemed to Nate not Noni that the dog's eyes glowed more brightly. He kept working, trying not to remember why. The strip of iron had an edge now. It had begun to take shape. By daylight, his task was completed. He had finished making a knife. Noni pulled the knife from the ice and felt its edge. The sun's glare reflected from it. Its brightness stabbed at his eyes and for an instant blinded him momentarily. Noni forced himself to call the dog. Here, Namuk, he said softly. The dog suspiciously watched him. Come here, Noni called. Namuk came closer. Noni saw fear in the animal's gaze. He could see hunger and suffering in the dog's labor breathing and awkward movements. Noni's heart wept. He hated himself and fought against it. Closer Namuk came, aware of Noni's intentions. Now Noni felt a thickening in his throat. He saw the dog's eyes, and they were pools of suffering. Now, now is the time to strike. A great sob shook Noni's kneeling body. He cursed the knife. He swayed blindly and threw the knife far away from him. With empty hands outstretched, he stumbled toward the dog and fell. The dog growled as he circled the boy's body, and now Noni was sick with fear. In flinging away the knife, he had left himself defenseless. He was too weak to crawl after it now. He was at Namuk's mercy, and Namuk was hungry. The dog had circled him and was creeping up from behind him. Noni heard a rattle in the animal's throat. Noni shut his eyes, praying that the attack might be swift. He felt the dog's feet against his leg the hot rush of Namuk's breath against his neck. A scream gra gathered in the boy's throat. Then he felt the dog's hot tongue licking his face. Noni's eyes opened. Crying softly, he thrust an, out an arm and threw, drew the dog's head down against his own. The plane came out of the south an hour later. Its pilot was a young man in the coast patrol. He looked down and saw the large floating iceberg, and he saw something flashing. The sun was gleaming off something shiny which moved. His curiosity aroused. The, ply the pilot circled and flew lower. Now he saw in the shadow of the mountain of ice a dark, still shape that appeared to be human. Or were there two shapes? He set his seaplane down on the water and investigated. There were two shapes, a boy and a dog. The boy was unconscious but alive. The dog whined feebly but was too weak to move. The gleaming object which had caught the pilot's attention was a crudely made knife. It was stuck da point down into the ice a short distance away and was quivering in the wind. <laughs>